natural hair and glasses, sitting in front of a backdrop that reads CICIL, rooted and independent, with the logo of a green flower with three blue people coming out of the middle, which are upside down triangles with Hey everybody, Rima McCoy McDeed here on behalf of the Youth Leadership Project. And the topic of conversation for this particular video is financial oversight. And before I get into that, I will offer a description of who and what I am. I am a 40 year old African American woman, black woman on the autism spectrum. My pronouns are she and her. And I am the executive director of Central Iowa Center for Independent Living in Des Moines, Iowa also the treasurer for the board of directors for the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network in DC, also the board treasurer for the National Council on Independent Living in DC, and I'm also the board treasurer for the Iowa Coalition for Collective Change here in Des Moines. That's a lot of finance <laughs> for one human being. And so I guess that's why I am speaking with you about this uh, titillating subject, and it is titillating. I know that finance tends to get get a, a raw deal in the nonprofit sector. It's seen as, as kind of boring, and uh, I'm here to dispel that myth. So I've got five tips for you. Uh, those of you who are interested in pursuing a leadership position at a nonprofit, executive director, CEO, that kind of thing, also, those of you who are interested in assuming a treasurer role for a board of directors, or even if you are wanting to join a finance committee for a nonprofit organization, this video is for you. So, five tips. Let's begin. Tip number one know the difference between financial leadership, financial management. Super important. When I was just getting started in the nonprofit sector about 20 years ago, I, like most ambitious young people, wanted to assume a leadership role as quickly as possible. <laughs> and, uh, and so I did a lot of reading of job descriptions and I got very familiar with what we call terminal positions at nonprofit sectors. So that would be executive director, chief executive officer type positions. One thing I noticed was this. Lots of these position descriptions, and I'll also add the treasurer for board of directors to this mix as well. A lot of these position descriptions are heavy on jargon with regards to financial management. Must be able to compile reports. Must be able to or know what QuickBooks is and be able to utilize QuickBooks on a regular basis, that kind of thing. But what I noticed was that people in those positions don't actually do anything as far as compiling data or plugging numbers into QuickBooks or, or anything like that. These duties are typically delegated to somebody else, either a chief financial officer or a CPA particularly CPAs that are third party that's, that the nonprofit has contracted out to. And so I began asking, well, why are we, we requiring that people who are executive directors or CEOs know how to be a CPA, for instance, if that's not actually something that they will be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, that's something that they are going to delegate to somebody else. and if you do a lot of looking, you will see that the nonprofit sector is actually uh, a sector that is not immune to implicit bias, uh, to systems of oppression, and by and large, executive directors, CEO type roles are occupied by individuals who are white and not racially marginalized people. And typically, position descriptions keep out diverse candidates who are indeed qualified, but because of their, their racial marginalization, they've experienced barriers to participating in educational programs that might prepare them uh, to be a CPA, for instance. But it's also uh, created barriers for folks like me 
to even be considered for uh, executive type positions uh, because we in our careers more often than not are not considered for positions that could prepare us to become executive directors in the first place implicit bias and so management jargon in position descriptions kicks out diverse but qualified candidates from consideration and that's why it's important to focus on leadership especially if we're talking about positions that supervise financial managers instead of doing financial management themselves so know that difference know that difference very important second tip also important all these tips are important <laughs> small healthy organizations outsource their financial management to cpa firms it's cheaper to do that than to have a cpa on staff and it yields cleaner reports and and it's always great to have third party looking at your finances whenever possible so small healthy organ organizations outsource their finances to third party cpa firms we're talking two million dollars or less larger healthy organizations they have a CFO on staff, but they also outsource a certain amount of their financial management to third party CPA firms as well. And so that CFO, that third party CPA are going to be doing that financial management for you. And it's going to be your job to oversee what they what it is that they're doing and to interpret the reports that they are 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 crunching on a monthly basis. So if you come across an organization where that does not outsource any part of its financial management, know that that's more than likely a red flag. So if you happen to be a CPA yourself and you are interested in being a treasurer for a board of an organization that does not utilize a CPA, just know that more than likely your expertise is going to be called upon and it might be called upon more than you would like for it to be so keep that in mind if you are not a cpa you are probably going to be stepping into a role where there's confusion around the finances and that could be frustrating for you especially if you're stepping into a role because you want to be a support to an organization so keep that in mind Third tip, be on a first name basis with whoever it is that's doing the financial management for an organization. Now, obviously, if you are stepping into a CEO or a executive director role, you're going to be on a first name basis with this person or, or the firm that is doing the financial management for your organization. But if you are interested in being a treasurer or in joining a finance committee for an organization, it's just as important that you have a relationship with whoever it is that's doing the financial management for the organization request to sit down with them either by skype or in person and have them walk you through the most recent budget for the organization along with the the most recent documents for the organization as well help have them explain to you using the language of the organization what is on these documents so that if you step into that role you are able to use that language with the other stakeholders and and without skipping a beat basically fourth tip if you are considering teaming up with an organization either in a paid capacity or as a board member or a committee member review the organization's 990s 990 that is the tax return for the organization for the past five years and you don't the 990s are like 27 pages long full of really great information you may or may not know how to read one the important thing that you want to keep in mind with regards to reviewing 990s before getting involved with an organization is the information that's on the first page, the annual budget for the organization. What does that look like? So for the past five years, is it a flat line? 
Is it going up? Is it going down? <laughs> is it all over the place? You you want to you want to you want to have an understanding of what an organization's financial history has looked like the past five years. You want to make sure you're not stepping into a chaotic situation. Very important. At least for me, I'm not good with chaos. It triggers all kinds of overstimulation. So keep that in mind. And then finally, fifth tip: you want to actually know how to read and discuss the financial documents for an organization. So in the uh, paper that accompanies this video, I, I speak about these documents and then I also offer three examples of them. And those also go along with this video. But those documents are annual budget, balance sheet, also known as statement of financial position, and then the profit and loss statement. So the examples that accompany this video are from my actual organization from a few years ago, CISL. And, uh, and hopefully will help you to, to, to gain a, a greater understanding of how to read an organization as far as the numbers are concerned. So the budget. The budget is like a panoramic photograph and it's meant to showcase an entire 12 month history or hope for an organization. If you're looking at a, a, a proposed budget, this it looks like this is the hope for the organization. Yay. Uh, and, and so that's going to show you line by line what an organization is hoping to hit as far as each and every expenditure is concerned. Or if you're looking at an old budget, it'll it'll show you what what panned out for that organization for that. So that's the budget, panoramic photograph. Balance sheet or statement of financial position is like a thumbnail sketch of one twelfth of that panoramic photograph. It's just a very brief, this is where this organization is, is sitting as far as income that came in and money that went out or is owed outside of the organization and end of story. Now, the balance sheet is meant to go along with what's called the profit and loss statement, which is also a snapshot, a one-twelfth snapshot of that panoramic photograph, but it goes into much greater detail than the balance sheet does. It goes, it should line up with the budget, line item by line item, and it should accurately tell you how much money is going out of the organization line item by line item, payroll, insurance, rent, utilities, et cetera, et cetera. So profit and loss statement is a great tool because it can give a heads up as far as, hey, we're underspending as far as payroll's concerned. Should we talk about that? Or and it can also signal when an organization is overspending. Hey, we are 300% over budget as far as fundraising expenditures are concerned. What's up with that? So the profit and loss statement is, is a great tool for gauging on a month-to-month -month basis the financial health of an organization. So obviously these documents have, have a lot to them and there's a lot of vocabulary associated with looking at these documents and articulating what's on them. This video is, is meant to, to introduce a person to those particular documents and, and hopefully interest you enough to want to find out more information about what financial leadership looks like, what it should look like, and how you fit into it. So if you have any questions about financial oversight or about systemic barriers to multiply marginalized people assuming financial oversight positions with nonprofit organizations, you are very welcome to reach out to me at my website, www.reyma.org. And I'd be happy to get a conversation started with you about that. 
thank you for your time. I know that, again, finance is not considered the most titillating subject matter, but if you've stayed with me to the end of this video, hopefully you've been inspired enough to want to get out there and find an organization to serve and uh, in a financial capacity for. Thanks so much again, everybody. Have a great day.